What's up guys, Austin from Madfire Productions here, and I'm doing my first video for my second channel, The Ghost Watch, which deals in the paranormal, which the paranormal is like ghosts, extraterrestrials, cryptozoology, all that kind of stuff. So today I'm doing my top 10 haunted places in Michigan, which is my home state. I don't live that far from Detroit. Yep. Um, but <clears throat> um, I guess I'll get started right now, and I got a list here that took me like a half hour to complete so all right so if I look down I'm just looking at my list so or I can put it up here number 10 the Omer Plains up in Omer Michigan which is I believe around it's around Ogemaw County I believe it's up past the sum and there's been lots of weird things happening there Native American burial grounds are around there so could be a lot of odd things. They say there's the, the witchy wolves, which are like these beastly wolves that just roam the areas, which are supposedly guarding the um, bodies of the Native Americans. And also, lots of Sasquatch sightings there. And fun fact, Omer is the smallest incorporated city in Michigan. All right. Number nine, you guys might have heard this one. The Paulding Light up near Paulding and Waters Meets in the Upper Peninsula. It's been going on since about around 1966 when some teenagers saw it. It's a light that appears ne nearly every single night just um, beyond. I should have a picture somewhere over here. Um, it happens nearly every night. It's unexplained. A lot of people say it's car lights or planes. I don't think so. It's That's been debunked. A lot of people say it's swamp gas. It's not. I've seen people do like um, some like um, gas scientific stuff over there and they didn't get any results of swamp gas being over there oh and some there's some legends one's about a railroad worker with a lantern he got killed by a train and that's his lantern or native americans dancing on electrical wires is one of them and another is a mail courier uh lantern again um number eight we go to a lighthouse the Sis Schwa Lighthouse. That's how it's pronounced. It's pronounced Sis Schwa, French. It's near Gulliver, Michigan. Um, the old lighthouse keeper, William, is said to haunt um, the lighthouse. He died in the late 1800s of very painful illness. And he has been seen just walking around the lighthouse, walking around in the woods in the back, watching people. He's been seen through the windows. He's also been known to throw silverware about, so, but people seen him in the, in like, dark woods, just walking about, like, hey, I see you, like, oh, hi. <laughs> but, um, number seven is right in Detroit, the Whitney Restaurant. It's a very old restaurant. It used to be a house of a, um, very wealthy man, uh, David Whitney Jr. He died in the house, so did his wife, and they're both said to haunt the house, the elevators will go up and down floors right on their own. Um, he's been, people have seen him in the elevators and seen him go through the floor as well. Um, tables and utensils get, move across the own, on their own. Also, uh, another fun fact, the third floor bar, they know about their ghosts. They call their bar the ghost bar, so, and there's been apparently ghosts up there, so, uh, don't know how that's. I mean, just go up to get a drink. Oh, shit. I am going to hunt you. Oh. <laughs> but number six is another Upper Peninsula one, the Calumet Cedar in Calumet. Um, it's haunted by a late Polish actress, and apparently she was kind of famous, so it's odd that she's kind of haunting this small joint, but apparently she, apparently she liked it. Um, her name, Helena Majeska. She's a Polish actress, but she's supposedly a very friendly, nice and helpful, um, ghost as well. There are, they do exist, like Casper, so. Um, one story, an actress who was doing Taming of the Shrew by William Shakespeare forgot her lines in the middle of a play, only to hear them whispered to her right in her ear and with nobody around there. And if, you probably wouldn't be able to hear somebody whispering to you as, on the other side of the stage, so. And she had the, the Helena has a big portrait right in the theater, and whenever it's moved or taken down, a lot of poltergeist stuff starts to happen. 
She'll, like, um, make loud bangs, turn lights on and off. But she just wants people to know that she is there. So, my list is kind of screwed up, so. All right, number five is the Fenton Hotel in Fenton, Michigan. Not that far from Flint, Michigan. It's not a hotel anymore. It's now a nice upper scale restaurant, but only like the first floor is really used. The two other floors, not so much. There's an old custodian that haunts his former abode because he used to live in the second floor and named um, Emery. He's, he's another nice spirit. He's considered a gentleman. People hear him walking upstairs and when um, customers are leaving or stuff, he'll start slamming on walls to make to the, the wait staff. Come on, get a get a move on. Um, there's also a figure that will sit in a corner stool and always order a whiskey. And when the uh, waiter brings it back, he is no longer there. Um, people having their names heard, touched, all that stuff. Um, even being hugged, I've heard. So. And that's just three of the supposedly many, many spirits that haunt the Fenton Hotel. So, <laughs> number four is the entire campus of Michigan State University. Michigan State, known for their um, awesome sports teams, nearly every building on the campus is haunted. At least five of the residential halls are haunted. Um... Moving elevators, whispers in said elevators, alleged satanic rituals in one of the halls, electronics turning off and on by themselves, figures dancing in cafeterias, shadow figures seen in the gardens, odd noises from the auditorium, and like an odd one, like um, one or two students die oddly every year from Michigan State University, which that's actually kind of true because I hear the news and everything around here, so... That actually is sort of true, so that's kind of an odd one. I have friends that go there, so I'm kind of, kind of odd. Stop turning off computer. All right. <laughs> Number three is the Felt Mansion in Saugatuck, Michigan, which is on the western um, coastline of the state by Lake Michigan. This is an odd one for you. Um, there's been shadow figures seen, doors open and close on their own. Um, what's her name? Agnes Felt. She supposedly died of a stroke, but it's also been said that she committed suicide by jumping out her window, and she's been seen countless times reanimating that jump out of the window. Her husband said she died of a stroke, maybe to just cover up that she killed herself. We may never know. Behind the mansion was a former correctional facility, only one building stands, the Dunes Correctional Facility. And there was a rumor that it used to, it was called, this is just a, mostly a legend, but uh, there have been sightings, people calling it the um, Junction Insane Asylum, where these creatures called the Melon Heads escaped, which they were suffering from a disease called hydrocephalus, where a ton of liquid, liquid, liquid gets into the brain and swells it up. And that's a real disease, and they say... A lot of the patients escaped and are now feral, roaming through the woods, and hungry for anything they can find wandering in the woods. Um, believe you me, I don't think I'm going to go hiking in those woods. There's a BMX trail back there. Good luck if you want to do that. Number two is the Soup Cemetery in Belleville. Belleville is a suburb of Detroit. It's not that far. I have first-hand experience here because... I'm with a paranormal group based around uh, Down River, Michigan, and we we investigated here, and I'll show you a picture I caught of these red eyes that should be somewhere over here. Oh, my God, it's creepy. I, those, there's no reflective surfaces or anything. Those are, and when you zoom in, you can see figures where those red eyes are. So, there's something going on there. I mean, people have been grabbed. Dark figures scooting in and out behind trees and headstones, red eyes all over the place, feelings of being watched and shouldn't be there. Uh, I know firsthand how creepy the cemetery is at night, so that's why I have it so highly rated. A lot of people say don't go there. It's right next to a huge apartment complex and right off of I-94. It's in the middle of lots of people, and 
it's all very old and it's extremely haunted so it's just odd placement though and now number one <laughs> the entire village and island of Mackinac Island oh, if if you haven't been to Mackinac Island you really got to go it's a it's amazing it's like no cars are allowed on the island it's beautiful tons of awesome things to do there and see it's just just fantastic but it's also incredibly haunted. Um, you have Fort Mackinac, which was built during, around the Revolutionary War. Not really used to much then. But when the War of 1812 started, there were a couple battles that took place there. And um, around uh, 70 Americans were killed or wounded. And all that energy can conglomerate into one spot. It's going to make for some bizarre encounters. So there's been lots of soldiers seen around there, around the island, just marching. There's been skeletons found in there. It's now a huge, um, basically, museum. It's really, really cool. They do reenactments also. It's very... I actually have a couple reenactments on my other channel, Madfire Productions, if you want to go check those out. So then there's um the Grand Hotel. <laughs> Such an imposing but beautiful structure with the longest porch in the world. Built in 1887, I believe. Um, <clears throat> there's, it had countless share of people visiting there. And also a few skeletons in their closets. Almost literally. Almost literally. When Before they were built a grand hotel, when they were about to construct it, they were digging up the ground under it. Probably over a hundred skeletons were found. Don't know why. They were just there. Um, and there's been odd sightings in the hotel. Not a whole lot of sightings to say the hotel's really haunted. But with all those skeletons, it might be. Also on the island you have Mission Point Resort. Where there was a ghost named Harvey, who was a former college student whose girlfriend dumped him. He killed himself. He's been known to like. He's a prankster. He's not a. He's. He's not an evil ghost. He's just a prankster. So he'll play, play pranks a lot. A lot of times on girls, and he'll slam stuff and like turn stuff on and off. Also, a dark cloaked figure that looks like a judge has been seen and soldiers walking around. So, but. Mission Point Resort is also a very beautiful resort near uh, a cool structure called Arch Rock. So if you have, just if you want, just check out any of these locations online, or if you can, go there and just see for yourself. Obviously, if it's a place where you need like tours or something, don't go trespassing, please. But I'm a huge paranormal nut. I'm part of a ghost hunting crew. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and good luck hunting. Later, guys.